Here we go. Let's make it a good day. We do it our own way. Let's make it a good day. Oh, no matter what they say. Oh, yeah. yeah. Good morning, Golden Valley. Good morning, Richfield. Good morning, Hudson, Wisconsin. And good morning to you. Welcome to the Jason Show. I'm Jace. Happy Monday. Please say hello to my sidekick sister from another mister and the new star of the Kinky Boots National Tour, Kendall Mark, everyone. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> oh, oh, it's going to be a good day because um, Kendall has new boots. And uh, look at those. Oh, yes. She's either. Wait. She either stole those from the Wicked Witch of the East, or she is, in fact, the new cat, newest cast member of Kinky Boots. I stole them from Miss Minnesota. Yeah. Oh, you stole them from your sister, mm -hmm. who just happens to be Miss. That's convenient. Very convenient. Happy Valentine's Day to you, dear Happy friend. Happy Valentine's Day. You look lovely. Thank you. You too. Where's your piece? I didn't, you know what? I didn't want to upstage you. I, you needed to shine bright for the Valentine's Day. You don't want to upstage these boots? No, I don't want to upstage these boots. Nothing could upstage. <laughs> Carol Look Channing couldn't upstage those boots. Look at these things. Ethel Merman couldn't upstage those boots. <laughs> RuPaul couldn't upstage those boots. You wore that because we have bosses in the house today. Don't You wore those, right, didn't you? Duh. Yeah, exactly. Kendall went to the Nordstrom Rack because we have big boss. Speaking of that. Now, did you know that? Now, you know how we make fun of the bosses here a lot. Mm -hmm. But there's a big, 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 we're not talking middle management. There's a huge, huge Fox executive mm -hmm. in the building right now, not down here. This is where the little people work, but they're up in Mim Jong Un's tower right now, uh, <laughs> talking and plotting. And he arrived just moments ago. Director Leo, Leo? Yes, Jason. Uh, did we put the camera in her office over the weekend? Yes, we did. Um, can you roll the live feed of what's happening upstairs with the big boss right now? Sure. Okay, roll it. Descending from the platform. There he is. There's Mim right there. Our news director. He's in, he's in the red right there. He's coming up. Now they're meeting to discuss the future of our show. Will the show remain or will they put Hogan's Heroes reruns on at 10 a.m.? Oh, it's going to be great. He looks good. He yeah. looks good. I like I, how half the people dressed up in red for Valentine's Day. That's right. Touch. That's mm -hmm. right. They're, that's his Imperial Guard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, it's going to be a good day. I can't wait. Well, you know, everyone gets nervous. If you're in an office, you know how it is, like whether you, maybe you work for a franchise like a subway yeah. and the district manager comes and they start like cleaning everything. The secret is the bosses don't really, I, I love it like when you're in an office setting and the big wig comes and they make you clean your cubicle. Do you think they care about little Millie's cubicle? They don't. Who knows? I don't know. I don't think they're checking the cubicles for cleanliness. I did clean my desk. Did you clean your? Uh -huh. Well, we certainly didn't clean back there. <laughs> Let's get started, everybody. It's time for the hot dish. Roll it, Leo. <laughs> That'll be mentioned in the meeting today. It was the moment we had all been waiting for. What would happen when Dr. Dre, Snoop, Mary J, and friends hit SoFi Stadium for the Super Bowl halftime show? Before we chat about it, if you missed it, here's a little bit. Snoop dancing and Mary J were my favorite. I could watch Snoop on a loop 
just dancing for an hour. Just so good. And Dr. Dre looks great. I'm 50 cent. I know. Oh. I know, but can I ask why why was he hanging upside down? I'll take him any way you want to be. I know, him. but he was hanging upside down. Oh god, that man is beautiful. I know, oh. I know, but I okay. Oh. Simmer down, Kiki Boots. I know. It's a family show. Did you know I memorized all the lyrics to Into Club in the back of my seventh grade biology class, printed them off and memorized mm. them. Funny when that song came out, I was in my 10th year <laughs> here at Fox. I had contributed quite a lot of money to my 401k. Oh. While you were keeping your colors in the, uh, in the lines with your coloring book, I was, yeah. Anyway, no, it was great. Some are calling it the best halftime show ever. Here's my thing. It was spectacular. Mm -hmm. However, I think it was a great concert. It wasn't like a spectacle that you're, you, you know, that you kind of want from these Super Bowl shows. Again, I loved it, but still my all-time favorite, and I'm not just saying this because we're here in Minnesota, Prince, mm -hmm. Prince, mm -hmm. you know? But this, this concept, though, if I'm Jay-Z who works with the NFL on these shows, I would do more of these mashups, yes. you know, because this was a celebration of, of West Coast hip hop. Mm -hmm. Do more of these themes because then everybody watching has somebody that they love. Oh, absolutely. And I think, I, I mean, I don't really love when it's just an individual myself. Prince was an exception. Yeah, I say always. But I so I really actually really like this. This is a top five for sure for me. And Gaga, I mean, falling from the I mean, oh, diving from the ceiling. Come on. I, I was going to do that today for the boss. I was going to just repel from the roof. Did we not? Did, did no, we don't have the cleared? budget. Okay. What did you think of the halftime show? Let us know right now by going to fox9.com slash poll. Did you love it? Just okay or eh, I've seen better. Let's see what it is. 67% of you loved it. Oh, no. Nobody voting for Meh. I've seen better. Good. It was, it was a great show. And Mary J. Blige. Oh, come on. looks like that? I know. And she has to be in her 50s. Dr. Dre looked great. Oh, so yeah. good. Again, Eminem or uh, uh, 50 Cent hanging upside down. Don't get it. Next in the dish, aside from the halftime show, there are a lot of rather interesting commercials. We pulled a few. Advertisers forked over $7 million for 30 seconds. That's it. One that hit, uh, hit the mark for me was the one with Arnold as Zeus. I loved this. Look. Sweetheart, it's not rocket science. I'm heading out. Don't forget to take Peggy for a walk. Yo, Zeus! Ah, a little juice! That's it. I'm done with this place. We'll see about that. Everything okay out there, baby? Hey! Yeah. Little Peggy, a little walk, huh? I figure you could use a little pick-me-up. All electric? All electric. The BMW iX. Electricity in its ultimate form. Electric Avenue. It had everything. All the ingredients you want for a viral hit for a commercial. Nostalgia, a classic star, music, and a cute Pegasus. Oh, the Pegasus. So cute. Mm -hmm. I, I laughed out loud at this one. This was the one. And again, it was part of the theme of the theme this year was Bitcoin. Uh, and electric cars. Everybody was selling electric cars. Everybody. Yeah. Sama Hayek played his wife, uh, which was just, it's so good, so good. Another commercial that had people feeling all the feels. This ad from Chevy. It mirrored the Sopranos opening credits and Jamie, Lig, uh, Jamie Lynn Sigler driving an EV Silverado. You guys know she played Tony's daughter in the show. This was great. I wasn't sure where they were going. I knew this was a recreation of the credits because, you know, I love a good opening title sequence. But I was like, OK, what's this going to advertise? Because some of them, they do something, you know, some of these commercials, they do a great beginning. And then at the end, it's like drive a Toyota. And you're like, what, what, what did that have to do with Toyota? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, and now for the bad, uh, aside from the endless crypto ads, one of the first commercials features Zendaya. She played Sally, Sally from so She Sells Seashells. I sound like Sidney Brady there, <laughs> which ended up being an ad for Squarespace. But it just gave me a headache. I, it fell flat for me. Did it for you? I actually liked this one. I, you did? I did. The only one I didn't love, but I, I did appreciate that you had to take out your phone was the Bitcoin one. Where the, just the, the pong. It just ponged the whole time until you're finally like, all right, let me scan it. What is it? So it was effective, but it was. What did it give you? I didn't do it. 
Oh, it, it brought you up to the Bitcoin website and it gave you some a discount, I think, on your first Bitcoin. Oh, no, no. I don't, know. I don't do anything. Unless it's no. giving me like a, a taco at Taco Bell or something. Or like a McNugget? No, uh, I'm not going to do that. That's all you want? That's all. I, I don't know. I don't know about crypto or NFTs or TFNs or I don't know. I'm surprised you didn't love the Mick Ultra commercial. Which one was that? With all the sports stars. Oh, I like that with Serena and Serena walks in at the yeah, end. Yeah, Alex I like that Morgan, one. Pete yeah. Manning. Mm -hmm. I knew all those people. I could have named all those sports people. Really? The Mannings, Eli Payton. Uh huh. No, anyway. Brooks Kepka. Did you know who? Who? Was? Steve. I tried. <laughs> we have a lot more to come. We'll go get some more Senka, some more OJ, and we'll be back right after this. Back in a moment, friends. The dish isn't done. And let me tell you, it's real hot. Now, and it just would have been a really half dose. Adele is finally opening up on what exactly went wrong with her Vegas residency and if it's really ever going to happen. Then, I'm surprising an unsuspecting Jason Show viewer. Surprise, Jane! With one of our most sought after items, our show mug. See what happens. And it's Ted and Kendall's turn to be a fish out of water. We're sending them to go karts on ice. That and more when we come back. Every night, I dream the same dream. And then, the nightmare begins. I did what I had to do to protect our world. You cannot control everything, Strange. You opened the doorway between universes. And we don't know who or what will walk through it. Wanda, what do you know about the multiverse? Viz had his theories. He believed it was dangerous. He was right. He was right. It's a new look at the upcoming Doctor Strange of the Multiverse of Madness. One of the big commercials in the Super Bowl last night. It hits theaters in May. Looks so good. Oh, looks really good. Benedict Cumberbatch. He's having a great year. Nominated with his movie, the dog movie, and now this. Power of the dog. Power of the dog. I was going to say, I always want to say the lost dog. Close. Different movie. That one's Lassie. You know on Mondays we get a special serving a hot dish all the way from California. A. Please give it up for our friend Brad from TMZ. Hi, Brad. Good morning, Jason. How are you? I see you're back in the office, my friend. Congratulations. Hey, we're back. A, a soft opening, if you will, this week, and then everyone's back next week. Perfect. First up, someone Vikings fans are familiar with. What's going on? This is, this is, uh, what's going on with Adrian Peterson? Yeah, I mean, this is a, a, a tough one, Jason. Over the weekend, Adrian Peterson and his wife, Ashley, uh, they were flying out of Los Angeles on a flight headed to Houston. Uh, we're told that that plane pulled off from the gate, uh, was headed to the runway, and there was some sort of a disturbance that started verbal and somehow got physical between both Adrian and Ashley. The plane had to return to the gate uh, where law enforcement actually met it, and Adrian was taken off the plane uh, because apparently there were uh, visible injuries on Ashley. Oh. Now, I don't know exactly how severe they were. Obviously, uh, they were visible enough for an arrest, uh, and a rep has come out for the family and said, look, they did have a, a, a disagreement uh, and, uh, and the family's going to be working through this privately. Oh, my goodness. Just not good. Not good yeah. at all. Finally, there was, uh, there's no one more comfortable in their skin than Lizzo. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I say that because she has a goal, doesn't she? She certainly does, uh, and we talked to Lizzo after a Super Bowl party here in Los Angeles Saturday night, uh, actually one where Drake performed, uh, and we were just talking to her because Cardi B is a friend of hers, and Cardi B is now the creative director of Playboy. Uh, so Lizzo shot her shot, you know, she said, uh, you know, Cardi, I'd, I'd love to have a feature in Playboy, just sign me up. Uh, she recently had a, a piercing party for her team where they got new earrings and everything like that. She said, I'll show the new piercings. We can do it big. Uh, and like you said, Jason, I mean, she's just a really good time, and you can tell she really enjoyed herself Saturday. 
Brad, are you, uh, I mean, um, are we going to have, let, let's have a TMZ Jason show combo piercing party. <laughs> you know, that sounds like a nightmare to me, Jason. I, it, I don't think, I don't think it's a, it's a party. That's for sure. That, yeah. I'll just go to Claire's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 The $5 piercing. We're Ex set. Exactly. Brad, thank you, my friend. Have a good week. Thanks, Jason. Brad from TMZ. More of these stories at TMZ.com and TMZ on TV. Check your local listings. You know what I heard in that whole thing? Hmm. Cardi B works for Playboy. Did you know that? No. When he said that, I was like, my girl, yeah. Playboy? What? I, I, I didn't know that. I didn't even know Playboy was still around. Well, you wouldn't. I mean, <laughs> I mean <laughs> FYI, I canceled my subscription in the late 90s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Articles. <laughs> Truly. <laughs> yeah. I'm the only human that really meant that. <laughs> Next in the dish, uh, the Super Bowl featured several teasers and trailers for upcoming movies. I showed you one a little bit ago. Among them, a show, Amazon's bazillion dollar expensive Lord of the Rings spinoff show. It's called The Power of the Rings. Look at this. Haven't you ever wondered what else is out there? There's wonders in this world beyond our wandering. The series is set in the second age of Middle-earth, thousands of years before the events of the Lord of the Rings film. The Power of the Brooch will debut on Amazon Prime in September. You're very excited. I know you are. You represent the, 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 the Rings uh, folks out there. You're very excited about this. It looks so good. And Jeff Bezos is a massive Lord of the Rings fan, so you know he's like, I don't care. Here's my money. Take yeah. it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to need a lot of money. Oh, absolutely. To make it look good. Because mm -hmm. folks know they, they don't differentiate. They're going to want the same level of production in uh, the power of the brooch as in, in the original movies. So this is about how in the, in the movies that you've seen, there's the one ring that rules them all. This is how all those individual rings were made in thousands of years before those mo that movie and the entire trilogy there. So it's going <laughs> to my tranquilizer dart. <laughs> <laughs> I digress. It's new. We got that in the last budget. <laughs> Next in the dish, Jordan Peele, the guy behind uh, Get Out and Us, is back with a new movie. Even before the Super Bowl, this was one that I watched, I think, on Saturday, and I sent it to the producers. Because, uh, anyway, I'm not going to say a lot. It's going to have you, on, as they say, on the edge of your seat. Here's the trailer for the movie Nope. It's a bad miracle. They got work for that. Yeah, nah, nah, nah. Mm-hmm. Nope. <laughs> nope. Hits theaters in July. And can I tell you what was just said over our over our uh, walkie talkies? Walkie talkies. What is this? 1972. <laughs> our, our earpieces. Director Leo. Halfway during the uh, during this, it goes like this. He goes, "Is this a romance? Is this a horror movie? What is this? Is this is this a horror movie? No, Leo." It's a Hallmark Christmas movie. I think your tranquilizer dart hit Leo. I think it hit director Leo and not you, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is what I love about this, is the fact that, you know, some trailers, kind of like the multi, uh, the Doctor Strange, you basically see the whole movie in the trailer. This, 
I don't have a bloody clue what this movie's about. Do you? Nope. Nope. There are horses. There's creepy ladies under a veil. There's a crab. Thing. I don't know what the crab is about. Oh, and those floaty car things. Those things are in car lots. There's like those in there. Well, okay. Too. Well, we know what those are. Those are floaty car things, well, car shop things. But they all things. deflate. Then horses are running. Never a good sign. No. When animals flee, flee with them. They they know they are running away from danger. You gotta go. Yeah. Anyway, it comes out. I can't wait for this. See the whole trailer uh, on uh, the Nope website, or I think it's Universal. Next in the dish, Chevy Chase was featured on CBS Sunday Morning. You know we love CBS Sunday Morning. And he was asked, because he has this reputation, it's not us saying it, he has a reputation for being a big old jerk. Look. When you read that stuff, when people say, Chevy's been a jerk, are those unfounded cheap shots? I guess uh, you'd have to ask them. I, I don't give a crap. <laughs> what? No, Chevy Chase certainly does not. Uh, I'm who I am, and I like who I am. I don't care, and it's part of me that I don't care. I've thought about that a lot, and I don't know what to tell you, man. I, I just don't care. You know, I'm a fan of, uh, I love Vacation. I just watched it recently on my way to the break. Laughed, it holds up really well, the original Vacation. And I love Christmas Vacation, like all of us. Mm -hmm. So I'm a, I'm, I'm a Chevy fan, but that's hard to watch because, you know, I, I part of getting old, the, the beauty of it is you start to care less about what other people say, but there is a line to just say that you don't give a crap that a lot of people say that you're not just a jerk, but you're abusive. Uh, and, and, and again, I always say where there's smoke, there's fire. Mm -hmm. There has to be a little fire with these rumors. Multiple cast members from multiple movies and TV shows have said that he is more than a jerk. He can be abusive on the set. And to say, just be dismissive of that, I don't know. I think it goes beyond the grace of I don't care. I think it's just a little right. unnecessary. He seemed almost exhausted by the question. Well, because he's asked about it a lot because it's a long list of people that think he's a butthead. I'm just being clear. He's 78 and is a year removed from a near fatal heart failure incident. He says he still wants to work. He does like shows where he, they watch a movie and then you get a QA and a with them. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, you can't take away that the guy's a legend, but mm -hmm. still, I wish he was a kinder le legend. Next in the dish, Adele is opening up uh, finally about what happened with her Las Vegas residency. She was on Graham Norton and talked about what forced her to pull the plug last minute. Look. But it just, it just wasn't ready, and there were lots of different reasons of why. There were COVID, you know, delays with pieces of the show. There were some things that weren't going to be arriving until the day of the show, so therefore I would never be able to see them or approve them. Um, so, that, that, you know, there were lots of delays for that. We, our manpower was down because I'm doing all this testing for, my, you know, for all my crew and stuff yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. and our carpenters who are there to fix and change things, you know, there and then, we had, like, hardly any able to come to work, and it just would have been a really half show and I can't do that I can't that, that doesn't people will see straight through me up on stage being like she doesn't want to be doing this and yeah. that's not I've never done anything like that in my life yeah. and I'm not going to start now you know I think people accept that I think it's just a little wishy the wishy-washiness of it and the last minuteness of it mm -hmm. you know you did it at quite literally the 11th hour mm -hmm. people were <laughs> people were getting their cocktails at the bar at the theater and you're like oh not today Right. I'm and gutted. And there's yeah. no like, okay, don't worry though, in a month. It's just been sort of. Well, yeah, well, on that though, she did tell Graham, because Graham tried to get it out of her. Well, when are you going to do? She's not going to announce a new set of dates for the residency, a residency until she knows for sure, until she knows for sure that she's going to be able to do it. Because right. why disappoint people twice? Right. Yeah. She wants to do everything right. I do respect that. We're going to take a break, everybody, coming up in a little bit. Kendall and Ted on go-karts on ice. It's a recipe for, well, hopefully good television. We'll be right back, back in a moment. Welcome back to the show, my friends. Well, there are go-karts, and then there is epic kart racing on ice. Recently, Kendall and producer Ted took their driving skills to the racetrack in Stillwater for a one-of-a-kind, oh my goodness, racing experience. Look at this. 
Okay, so here's the backstory. Kendall and I did some rock climbing, and she beat me miserably. All right. I'm just dangling here! <laughs> and I need to beat her at something. So how do I beat her on these go-karts? I think the number one thing is to not get stuck in the snowbank. That's gonna slow you down. Yep, so don't yeah. crash. So if I told Kendall to, to just floor it and go right, go as fast as she can, would she go 62 into the snowbank? No, probably 28. Oh. Well, you wouldn't do that, No, right? I, No, of course not. Okay, good. Do you have any experience r racing carts? Uh, I used to do go-karting a lot as a child, just like, you know, random go-karts. Now I drive a bus. Drive a bus? I will say, last week I was pulling into my bus spot and this, there was another bus behind me and I pulled in in one swoop. It was the most gorgeous park job you've ever seen. And the, the bus driver behind me stopped me on my way out and she goes, I just have to tell you, that was one of the most amazing park jobs I've ever seen. Do you, do you have a lot of experience with bus driving? And I was like, no. Nope. Just this. I'm so sorry you had to listen to a bus driving story. <laughs> Let's find the wheels on the cart go around and around too. Oh. <laughs> Alright Kendall, so yeah. I feel like we should uh, make a little wager. Okay. Whoever is the best driver wins. Okay. And I have what the loser has to do. Uh oh. The loser has to write a poem and read it on the TV show for Jason. Did you have something to do with this? Did you know about this? A poem for Jason. There once was a dog, a dog in the snow. The snow dog said, go, and I said, hey, Todd, I'm gonna kick your butt. I'm a poet and a racer. I probably could've been easier when I was 31. I'm gonna have to like roll out of this. Oh God. Oh man. Yes. If I go backwards, how do I get the right way? That was a tight fit. I'm nervous. Well, I won. Uh, Kendall, she's still out there somewhere. That's Maybe she needs to work on her driving a little bit more. I'm a professional bus driver. That's our bus driver. <laughs> Kendall joins me now, and producer Ted joins us from the control room. Now, I love you, Ted, you did a great job. I should say too, I was supposed to do this and I would have done this, but this is the week that I got sick. Mm -hmm. So I would, yeah, so you guys lucked out doing it. I hear Ted, is this true? Something happened after we finished shooting. So the owners, very lovely, very nice. Mm -hmm. They said after, after I won, they were like, hey, take the, take the carts for a spin, go as fast as you want. And I said, as fast as I want. No. They said, just go, just go to your heart's content. So no. I floored it. Let's look at it. And here I am flooring it. And I'm like, no, at, oh no. At some point I'm like, I don't think this is going well. No, <laughs> Ted, I, I flew over the mound into that thing. And what I'm told is the go-kart has never been the same since. Oh, great. Now, are they gonna bill us for this again? The bo all the bosses are watching, Ted. I don't really need a bill arriving today. Oddly enough, when that happened, they were like, whoa, that was awesome. Okay, perfect. <laughs>
That's what I wanted to hear. Now, Ted, you're the winner. Uh, Kendall, I don't want to call you a loser, but you're the loser. Mm -hmm. You have a poem for me. Because that's do. what you had to do. <clears throat> a poem for Jason. <laughs> there is a place where lost things go. I tell you where, but I don't know. I never lose, yet here I am. It turns out winning our Ted Ken. Do you see the humiliation written on my face? I ask you now, please, give me space. <laughs> space to do some cursing, begging, then wooing until I'm back in your good graces. Thanks, Ted. By Tickets are available. Ewing. Thanks, Ted. <gasps> Tickets are available I for details. It's beautiful, Kendall. For uh, go to epiccartracing.com and we'll post this on our Facebook page and YouTube a little bit later. We'll be back right after this. Back in a moment. That was gorgeous. Say how you. It was very yes. This is very Maya Angelou. <laughs> Let's make it a good day. We do it our own. Welcome back, my friend. Well, if you watched our show for any period of time, you know, for whatever reason, and I love this, this right here, the Jason Show mug, we change them every season, is a prized possession. Well, one viewer, friend, wasn't happy with me when she got passed over for one of these mugs. So here's the deal. Jane, hi, Jane, went to our live show at Parade Stadium in Minneapolis last summer, where we played a game to give away mugs. Well, things didn't work out for Jane, so she wrote us an email. Yeah, so someone isn't happy with me. And any time that's expressed in an email, I get worried, uh, especially when executive producer Jeff says, I have an email that you, uh, you should read, Jason. Mm, looks like it's gonna be one of those days. Here's the email from Jane. Jane writes, hello, Jason. I attended your show on July 14th at Parade Stadium in Minneapolis. One of the questions for the coffee mug uh, giveaway was, quote, who has a breakfast sandwich with them? I didn't holler loud enough, she wrote to me. I had a cliff bar in my purse. No one received a mug for that question. So I'm wondering, Jason, if you would be able to send me a Jason Show mug, the new design, please. I love that. Well, Jane, I love you. So get a shot, Eric. And here's the deal. We said, sure, Jane. We're going to get you a mug. We're going to send a Jason Show intern. We barely have a staff, let alone uh, an intern. You're looking at the intern. So I'm going to go surprise her at her place of work. And um, she doesn't know I'm coming, so I'm going to deliver the mug to myself. I'm from the Jason Show, and I can't film in here. So can you just send her out and around the outside? Uh, where outside? By the sheds. <laughs> By the sheds? OK. Oh, she's right there, actually. Jay. <laughs> You'll have to go outside by the show. So, yeah, wait a minute. I gotta see if I can find the intern again. I get this adjusted. Surprise, Jane! Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought I would surprise you myself. There's a cliff bar. I'll trade you the mug for the cliff bar. We don't have interns. <laughs> Let's do a picture. Are you surprised? Yes. Here we go. Thank you. No, thank you. Give me a hug. Oh. Okay, I don't want to get you in trouble. So get back in there. Bye, Jane. I really appreciate it. You're very welcome. We appreciate you, Jane, and all of you watching. Well, my new buddy Jane sent us a message after I surprised her, saying the mug and hug from me was more than she could ever imagine. It was the greatest surprise she's ever had. You know what the greatest surprise we ever had was? Moments after I left, Eric got caught by security. <laughs> 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 and Eric told him he worked for a different show. Thanks, Eric. We're always having our back. We're going to take a break. I love you, Jane. More comments from you. We're opening up the Jason Show mailbag because mail it's Mailbag Monday next. <laughs> I don't work with Jason. Welcome back, friends. Kendall's back with me. Welcome back. Thank you. You little poet. It's Monday, and on Mondays, we open up the Jason Show mailbag. Hit it, Leo. You've got mail. 
We sure do. Um, first up, a message from Darla related to my confusion over the card game spoons. She says, because I said I didn't know how to play spoons. I didn't know what this was. She says spoons is a lot like the game pit. Okay, I don't even know that game. Right Darla says, Jason, you're hyper enough to play. <laughs> You'd be the kid that scrambles all the spoons so no one else can grab a spoon. You would. Mm. You'd be the kid that uh, will be on the unemployment line by 55 today. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Ted, he mm -hmm. fired me again. No, I. you're right. I am <laughs> hyper, I, but I'm really competitive with games. That's what I mean. You'd be like. <laughs> but that pit game, she compared it to yet another game that I don't know. Do you know what pit is? No. I don't either. Yeah. Is it a card game? It is. With oh, orange, orange bells? Bell? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Pylons? I don't know. Next, now I'm going to get letters about Pitt. Next, <laughs> I got a letter in the mail from a viewer named Lori in Columbia Heights. Hi, Lori. Inside, she says, I want to thank you for the past two years for helping all of us cope with COVID. You're here for us to relax for an hour a day and enjoy our hot dish. I love pop culture, and you bring lots of information that I check out later. I hope you enjoy your gift. Well, Lori, I always love a good gift. You don't have to get me anything, though. But this is so cool. Leo, I don't know if we can see it because it's glass, but look at this. She gave me Mickey Mouse espresso glasses because she knows I love Disney. And you see it in there. You pour mm -hmm. it in there, and it comes to the shape of Mickey. Isn't that's, that great? That's really cool. It's just really, I, I say it a lot, and I know I'm a smart aleck, and it's hard to tell when I'm being sincere, but... It really means a lot to me when people take the time if they go to a flea market or they go to a store and they see like something from Dallas or mm -hmm. they see something Disney and they think of me. That's really nice of you. You don't have to do it, but that's really, really kind of you. Next, uh, speaking of sweet people, a sweet card from Erin, Wisconsin. Hi, Erin. She says uh, inside, she says, because of COVID, I discovered your show. And let me tell you, you and Kendall are my lunchtime friends nearly every weekday. Thank you so much for being a daily spot of laughter for me and so many. We always joke mm -hmm. that we, I said this again, our show is the the official maternity leave, mm -hmm. medical leave, mm -hmm. uh, uh, waiting room, tire shop, tire shop, oil changes, oil change. Yeah, we are in every waiting room, mm -hmm. and that's how, and then when people have a, a, I hear from a lot of moms that we're the maternity leave show. You know, I heard so Jordan went into an office once and was asking to, you know, like, hi, I'm Jordan, I'm here to see so and so, and they were like, oh wait. And they were watching our show, and he said he started laughing because he was like, that's, <laughs> that's my, my wife. wife. I'm getting cut off for my for wife my, for again. For my wife, yeah. That's great. <laughs> I love that. Erin awesome. is next. Hi, Erin. She says she grew up across the river from Kendall. Oh, Erin, who just messaged. Same one. Just same wrote, one. Yeah, just yeah, that's right. That's the same one. Yeah. Hi, girl. She grew up in? Probably Hager City. Okay, I knew she was going to go off. On, on Ellsworth. Hi. Ha what's it called? Haggard? Hager City. Hager City. Diamond Bluff, Ellsworth. Next up, a viewer named Judy. <laughs> sent us a video that you have to see. Judy wrote, we adopted seven month old Kevin the dog. I love human names with dogs, by the way. <laughs> anyway, Kevin the dog about a month ago. She is very high energy and has shown zero interest in TV until Kevin saw a Kindle story about going dog sledding last week. Judy says <laughs> Kevin the dog was so riveted to the story of Kendall and the Huskies. Uh, Judy and her husband Mike watch the show every day. Kendall, look. <laughs> <laughs> oh. hope, hope that dog is going to register the ratings. Oh, yeah. laid down even. He's yeah. really into it. <laughs> Relaxed. Love, hey, I'll take dogs watching. I will too. Please. They do the Seriously. Like the next comment is about producer Ted. You know, I love these. V Plaza, hi V, on YouTube says, I'm so jealous of flat Ted. I saw Ted twice driving to the station. I got to do my fangirl crazy wave while shouting, Ted! I was lucky enough to get his attention. Okay, <laughs> should we tell the story? Yes. So we have a meeting every, you get to see part of the meeting. We do packages, we, we, like a roundup of them. But Ted was telling us for the longest time that he had this fan, and we laughed even about that. Right. He had a fan that kept screaming at him mm -hmm. out of a car. And we thought Ted had maybe had a long weekend. Fabricated. You know, a little too much Chardonnay. A little too much Chardonnay. Yeah. 
But then when we got this, now Ted feels vindicated. He was like, I told you. I told you she was real, <laughs> that it was a real woman screaming at me. <laughs> Debbie is next. She has a comment about last week's Monday mailbag and another member of our staff. She says, just letting you know, you never did answer the woman who asked if director Leo was married. Most of us know he is, but thanks. Yeah, Le Leo is very married. I don't know why I said very, but very, very married. very married, happily. Happily married. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, if you ask his wife, maybe that's a different answer, but I think very happily. Mm -hmm. She's a babe. She does. She's fantastic. Mm -hmm. She doesn't often see him because he's always playing curling. Always. Always. But Every no, day. Leo was, if we didn't make it clear, very taken. I think almost, a lot, most of us on the staff are very taken, taken. Except one. Except for one. Except for one. Mm -hmm. And we'll put his email address at the bottom if you want to date with him. Finally, a comment from Marilyn. Hi, Marilyn. She says, please tell Kendall, thank you so much for her recommendation on urban pie pizza. I bought the margarita one with cauliflower crust, and it was awesome. So good. Urban pie pizza. We've gotten a few people that have said they really liked it. Um, and apparently right now there might be a sale at Lunds and Byerly's. Check it out before you go. I'm just saying it's really good. Low Hope carb. Hope our sales department's watching. <laughs> Low carb, 900 yeah. calories for a whole pizza. I've heard a lot about this too because I, I was really the good. Grinch because I said I, don't, I haven't had a cauliflower pizza that, that didn't like. taste like dirt. Mm -hmm. And this one People told me it's actually really and the good. The cheese is good. The cheese and the mozzarella. I'm Italian now. <laughs> It, you Who know? wound her up today? <laughs> hey, friends, you can stay connected with our show on social media. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just search for Jason Show TV. And, of course, our personal accounts as, too, uh, as well. Jason Matheson and Kendall Mark. There's always something Nutter Butter's happening on there. And you could be featured in a future Monday Mailbag se uh, segment. When we come back, what is in the world's shortest segment and the surprise goodbye? You're going to find out right after this. Back in a moment. <laughs> It's real. Welcome back to the show. You know what it's time for, the world's shortest segment. Hello. Today, uh, a different a different kind of shortest segment. Today, we're remembering filmmaker Ivan Reitman. The director and producer died in his sleep Saturday night. He's the man behind classic comedies like Ghostbusters, Animal House, Stripes. He just produced the latest uh, Ghostbusters that I just reviewed. Ivan was 75 years old, and I just felt it was so important. He's such a, a piece of Hollywood history, especially in the 80s, and uh, his creativity is, is sincerely going to be missed. He was a great director and a creative force in Hollywood. Ivan Reitman, again, was 75 years old. What is in the surprise goodbye? We don't know until you know. And we'll know after this. Back in a moment. Welcome back. We got the answer thanks to, uh, we have the best viewers. Remember when I was asking why 50, uh, 50 Cent was upside down? Yeah. It's an homage to his very first video. Thank you to Panda, <gasps> and we got so many. Thank y'all, I appreciate that. They're Good smart, job, smarter than me. Mm -hmm. It's time for the surprise goodbye. <laughs> Friends, you know how this works. Kendall and I have no clue what the producers have put in this segment until now. Today, you'll never believe what police in Northern California find inside a car during a traffic stop. An alligator. <laughs> what? You've got to be kidding me. A guy was pulled over last week and officers found the gator sitting in the passenger seat. No leash, <laughs> no cage, no nothing. Get this, he says he was babysitting the gator for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Vern, could you watch the gator while I go to the Home Depot? <laughs> the man was arrested and the alligator turned over to the Department of Fish and Wildlife. By the way, friends, if I need to remind you, uh, if you're living in California, if you're watching us there, it is illegal to have an alligator as a pet in California. A. But why? Why would you? I, I just don't think you should have wild animals. I, I, you know, I would watch an alligator for you, though, if you asked me to. I would not own an alligator. 
I, I had the wildest animal I had was a chinchilla and a ferret. Oh, I would not watch the ferret though. Ooh, creepy. They move really fast. Well, that story ended poorly anyway. Uh, let's get back to our <laughs> Super Bowl halftime show poll uh, asking what you thought overall. The halftime show 53% loved it. 39. Ooh, seen better. Thanks for participating. Tomorrow, see what happens when I attempt to go skajoring, which is skiing behind a horse. I don't know why you're laughing. That's tomorrow. But right now, if you're watching and your kid being bullied, go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Have a good day, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow.